recording. Yeah. But it was, oh. it was original and daring and very visually entertaining and a good cast, although singing was not a lot. They don't but, sing, though. Like, did you, like, they're not trained. They don't sing. He was just kind of uh, like, yeah, I think you guys could do it. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, I, I just, I, I, I liked it. Uh, Eventually, because I, I just had to realize that you had to accept it as its own thing. As a and film. As a film. Mm-hmm. And, and as a film of Sweeney Todd, like, I really don't know who could have done it better. Because mm-hmm. the cuts were not arbitrary. They were intelligent and, and thought about. You know what I mean? You mean, the, like, omissions as opposed yeah. to, like, the cuts? Yes. <laughs> well, and the cuts were, like, bloody as hell and fantastic. Good. And there were, there were tons of new imagination, especially in those, like, the fallings with all those cracks of the yeah, neck. Like, really there were so many grotesquely wonderful things. And, you know, Johnny Depp, okay, can't sing, but, but so much of that score is the, is the spitting, you know, low, gravelly, you know, lyrical yeah. prowess. And, and he's so, such a good actor that you just, I didn't care after a while. Well, it was just watching it for its own thing. Did you have something to add, Carlos? <laughs> um, okay, I saw Sweeney Todd when it came out. I went to the theaters, and I, you know, I was like, this, this is going to be a piece of shit. Yeah, I really <laughs> thought it was, I exactly thought piece that too. A piece of chive. chive. It's going to be yeah. a piece of chive. chive. And I went in there, and I saw it, and I was like, huh, you know what? This was better than I expected. I, you know, I was expecting, a, you know, an awful, awful movie, you yeah. know, because, like, how could you try to put Sweeney Todd into the film? I was like a purist. You know, I was like, how, how could you do this? This isn't what... This is, this is, this is, okay, and how could you do this to this material? But then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, okay. And then later on, as I thought about it more and it settled in my brain over a couple of years, I, was, I, I grew less fond of it. I was like, eh, it's, it's all right. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then you stood outside the theater going, you know, this was a very good movie. Hey, and then the person right. walked by and then you, exactly. oh, you know, this was a very good movie. <laughs> you, know, you know, last year in 1923, I... Back in the old days of the Depression, I didn't even have movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what we're talking about. You just had the radio. You know, dance around and pretend that the screen came. <laughs> Uncle Johnny, put away your Yeah, okay. You can uh, feel free to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, and, and, <laughs> I, I'm having such a good time watching you. I'm just like... <laughs> So they can just keep going. This time. Um, <laughs> you said, I th- it might have been Allie on Tumblr, maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know. But you said that you weren't going to put Gibson Fleck online because you guys are going to keep yes. working on it. So what's your plans with that? We, I mean, we are in the middle of some for real, for real, heavy, heavy editing. For real, yeah. So, I mean, even if we put it on YouTube, where it would be next wouldn't even be the same. So it's not even worth saying, like, here it is, here's the finished product, this is the music we wrote, come enjoy it. Um, that and, if you put something on YouTube, if too many people see it, word gets out, if it's not the right word, then you can't get noticed by people, if you can't, you know, if one producer hears, oh no, you're frozen, I'm going to keep talking though. If one producer hears... Are you there, Stephanie? I'm still here, yeah. Okay, oh, good. Yeah, it's, like, yeah screen, sorry, but, but, okay. Um, yeah, like if one person says like, oh yeah, I heard about that Gibson Fleck, how was it? And just one friend says, eh, you know, whatever, then, you know, that means that producer's not going to look at it. So we sort of need to keep it really under wraps because we want it to always be fresh and new to whoever we're trying to sell and, it to. And this production was just a first incarnation. It was never meant to be the finished, you know, musical. And so putting it up on YouTube kind of says, Here, here's what we right, did. Right, here's you know? it. It's and, and that was just the first performance, hopefully, in a series of many. Uh, and, and we're hoping that since it's not part of the Star Kid machine, we're hoping to take it, you know, to New York of its own accord and, and find backers right. and you know, or we might workshopping. go regionally uh, to and to not places other than New York City that would be willing to do do small workshop in theaters. So give some flack coming to a town near you. I, okay. I, I mean, really don't know actually. We have recorded the show, and you know, right. and we are and are recording the show. Um, but the thing is, like, like I mean, like Ali mentioned, we can't. You know, we're, we're not interested in, in releasing any of that information because it's the its current manifestation right now is is most probably not the you know incarnation that's going to represent itself out there right. at all. You know, and we would hate to you know. Say yeah. it again, sir. The plan is to try to get it to Broadway eventually, or I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, why the hell not? Yeah. You know, yeah, we're not going to turn it down. But, oh. you know, that, that's that's long. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but major. we're definitely taking it. Playing, we want to take it to New York, you know, yeah. as kind of you know to test ourselves as writers and to see yeah. how the material withstands you know the ultimate you know critique, which right. is New York. You know, yeah. our our director who helped us like get it off the ground is always like, 
It's the next cast, you guys. It's, it's the, the next, next cast. cast. <laughs> like, it's not, like it's we not really hope. Cast. We don't want to be the next <laughs> cast. We really hope it's not the next cast. <laughs> <laughs> not a big cats fan myself. <laughs> not Is anybody a big cats, big cats, cats fan? fan anywhere? Yeah. No. Any any Star Trek fans that like cats? cats. I apologize. Well, I'll, I'll let you know because I'm sure I'll hear about it. <laughs> They're gonna be like, I used to like AJ Holmes, but then he said he didn't like cats in a very room. <laughs> and so I don't like AJ so Holmes. So I don't like you, Holmes, as much. I don't like you as but much. But you're still jarring. It just means that now my favorite star kid's Joe Walker and not AJ Holmes, but it was it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was always Joe Walker anyway because his abs are better. God, your, your opinion counts. You're Does the it? wizard god. <laughs> I, I wizard really god. need to fulfill that, that <laughs> as wizard god. I've been a very lazy wizard god. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm kind of that type of god myself, you know. Yeah, but if I was a god, people you know, are just, I would be pe- a lazy god anyway. People are different types of gods. I'm I'm more of the benevolent, let my Bless people you. roam. Di- Dionysian sort yeah. of. See, I don't do that. I'm an Sorry, Old god. Testament kind of god. I don't. I don't. <laughs> out of extreme solutions. <laughs> what kind of god would you be? Um, I would be the kind of god who. Um, was Jewish. Uh, really focused on things until there were animals, and then I'd probably spend more time with the animals and with the people. Oh, yeah, Ali's a Jewish god. That's true, though. <laughs> I'm giving you a much better answer. Ali's a, Jew- Ali's a Jewish god. The New York Jewish god. Sorry, I don't know where to put my legs, you guys. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, this is good. This yeah, is better. This is definitely working. Nice. Right, good. Go on. Go on. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know that I can talk to you this way. <laughs> All right, I do have a question here that says, Allie tweeted about her mom rocking out to Land of the Dicks, which I thought was hilarious. It's true. So I want to know what their families initially thought upon seeing me and my dick for the first time. <laughs> um, uh, I have a couple funny stories about this. My dad flew out to see me and my dick, which was really kind of him. The musical. The musical. <laughs> uh, because he knew I was in it and that like, my friends had written it and so he thought he'd come see it. Um, and his expectations were obviously quite low because it was a show called Me and My Dick and it was my dad. Um, he did comment that when I was in my vagina costume, I looked like my grandma Sonny, which was weird. <laughs> that was his first comment. He's like, you look so much like your grandma. And I was like, that's weird. Um, but now when I watch it, I, I do see it. Um, but no, he was really impressed. He really was. He thought that the songs were really good and that it had a lot of heart and that it was... It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, he thought he laughed out loud. I sold out completely. Thought it was genuinely very funny and and. So whenever someone astute. says, I, I'm, "I'm biologically engineered to go," no, you can't do that. <laughs> um, but he really liked it. And so the reverse, I mean, the reason for that tweet was that my mom had never seen uh, me and my dick, and she tried to get through it on YouTube, but it's like so technologically incapable that she couldn't figure out clicking through to the next. Thing. <laughs> so it wasn't that it didn't hold her interest. She just couldn't get from part one to part two. It so she was like, you know what, I'll see it someday. It, it is hard. It, it is. is hard. You know it is. Because if you're so, not watching the playlist, they're not in order. And, like if you go right, exactly. to the next video. She couldn't <laughs> figure it out. So then she saw Gibson and was really, really impressed by that. And then asked me over a winter break if she could hear some more of the music that AJ and Carlson written because she's impressed. And I said, well, you know, my favorite song that AJ and Carlson have ever written, which is true, is Land of the Dicks. <laughs> and I was like, and I really think it's a very funny song. It's like old school Disney, like very young friend like <laughs> The lyrics are funny. I was like, if you just want to be able to, if you're going to accept it to listen to a song about dicks, like here. And she put it on and she well, thought it was great. And she was singing along to it in the kitchen after that. I came home the next day and she was rocking out some Land of the Dicks in the kitchen. No joke. We're proud of that recording too. Yeah, I, we're really proud of that recording. Yeah. And I remember when I we got that, that mixed and we got you know and we got the you know yeah. the audio files. We were like, yeah. this is awesome. This is, we were like we were like cranking it every day yeah. through winter break. And yeah. there are some pro- I mean, there are some things that aren't together. You know what I mean? Because just the, we had to do it so quickly. But but man, those horns and Jack Stratton on that drum set. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Great. Very good the music, like, I'm so impressed by, like, you guys. That's why I developed an interest in Star Kid. I was just, like, so impressed with what you guys have all accomplished. And that show really is a hard sell, though, when you try to explain it to people who yeah. are not Star Kid. Yeah. You, you should watch this musical. It's about a guy and his dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> but everybody who's seen it has said that it's very, you know, astute and. Yeah, anybody who's not willing to like, crude. who's willing to see it and get over it, is, is has has been pleasantly surprised. 